We start with the murder of the psychology technician Elizabeth Stacy and the disappearance of a university colleague. Elizabeth was found the Saturday before last beaten to death, locked in an office at the University of Westminster in central London. The last time she was seen alive was soon after she arrived at work in Regent Street in the West End of London on Guy Fawkes Day, Friday the 5th of November. Research assistant Stephen Reid had asked her to help with a computer problem and he hasn't been seen since. Guy Ferguson is now looking for him. And Guy, according to the papers today, you're now really worried about Stephen himself and his well-being. Yes, that's correct. Obviously, it's 11 days since Stephen was last sighted, and he was the last person seen with Elizabeth. Um, and obviously, we are concerned about his welfare as time goes on. And his parents haven't heard, his family haven't heard anything from his, fa his family are equally concerned, and uh, they haven't heard from him from that time. Are you looking for a suspect or, or for a witness? I've got a genuinely open mind in this case because uh, Stephen was the last person seen with her and could have uh, vital information to give to us about this case. He's 33, slim, six-footed. This, this is a picture from, uh, from the university. Where might he be? I mean, where are his friends? Where are his relatives? What part of Britain? His, his relatives are up, up in Edinburgh, but um, he has some connections with uh, the area of Cornwall and um, a, a, an area of Hampstead Heath, which was uh, an area he used to like to walk. If he's watching now, I mean, what do you say to him? Stephen, please get in touch with us. We need to resolve this matter as soon as possible. I have a genuinely open mind about it, but I really do need to talk to you as a matter of urgency. And if, if anybody's shielding him, worried for his sake? Well, I really hope people aren't. Um, we, we need to speak to him urgently. Um, he, we have no information that people are shielding him, but we do need to talk to him as a matter of urgency. Okay, well, Stephen, if you are looking at this now, please ring in. And uh, if you know where Stephen is or, or what's happened to him, call the incident room on 0171 321 7110. That's 0171 321 7110. A studio number on the screen now, and we'll be through much of the programme, 0500 600 600. Road rage has become a part of modern life. Uh, despite all the mythology, it's usually confined to rude gestures. On the rare occasions that it leads to physical violence, the culprits often turn out to be bullies in other walks of life as well. On a Sunday, uh, Sunday night about a month ago, the night of the England friendly against Belgium in Sunderland, two girls were driving down the A1M going south near Doncaster. They were deep in conversation, hogging the outside lane. What did he say to you? Oh, something about, did it hurt when you fall from the clouds or something <laughs> stupid like that? <laughs> he was such an idiot. Oh, he was nice. He was not. I've known Kelly for about six months. We just hit it off. We both enjoyed going out. We'd gone up to Newcastle for the weekend. <laughs> He's like, every time you turned away, he was like, leering in again. I know. What's the matter? What's wrong? There's just some bloke in the car behind you. He keeps flashing me. An idiot. Yeah, I know. Just ignore him. I'm driving on the limit. I'm not moving. He was waving his fists and gesticulating very rudely at me. There and you! Mental. So I just stuck my fingers up at him. What is his problem? And we didn't think anything more of it. Did you see him? Yeah, but I can't find it on the map because I don't know what number we are. Oh, hang on, it's this one, this one. This one? Yeah, quickly, oh that one. Sorry. I think I just cut him up. I didn't mean to. Right, so we want the third, third exit. Yeah. Um, M18. Westbound. Are you all right? What's happening? What's he doing? I was panicking to try and start the car and get moving. But lock the door! Help me. 
door. Open the bloody door. Get away from the car. Open the bloody door, you stupid cow. Open the bloody door. Get away. Open the bloody door. Get away from us. I was so scared. I just, I didn't know, I didn't know what, what to do. I didn't, there was no chance of us, like, trying to defend ourselves, really, because he was so big. She was just stood outside the door watching, like, but you could tell she was petrified. She was five foot six, she had brown, messy hair. I wasn't panicking that much because I thought, well, I was knocking my door, there's no way he can get to us. Open the door! You nearly killed me, you stupid cow! I thought he was going to kill us, to put it straight. I, I did, I thought there's no way we're going to be able to stop him. Hearing they'd got through to the police, the man drove off before they got his registration number. He was around 40 years old with a Yorkshire accent. He had blue eyes and greying hair. As he went back onto the motorway, at least one other motorist noticed a dark blue S-registered saloon. I saw him coming up behind the Silver Sierra and he undertook him and came up right close behind me. Well, he was so close, but he was actually quite intimidating. So I speeded up to about 90, but he was still right behind me. As he drew alongside, I could see the driver. He was about 40, quite smartly dressed. And I saw this woman sat bolt upright in the passenger seat, like she was really scared. of the M18, um, it's um, the motorway we're heading, um, I don't know the sign, it's the M18. Were you heading south near Doncaster on Sunday the 10th of October at about 10.30pm? We know a silver Sierra and a red Nissan Micra were overtaken by the offender. Do you remember an aggressive driver? Or were you his woman passenger? Please call. Both the girls were admitted to hospital. One of them had swallowed glass. Ring the incident room. It's a free call number on 0500 0500 99. That's 0500 0500 99. Or here, 0500 600 600. Now, uh, DS Jackie Hames isn't here tonight because she's expecting a baby. And uh, at any moment, good luck, Jackie, from all of us here. But we do have uh, her colleague, Detective Superintendent Jeremy Payne. We're told that men commit six times more crimes than women. At any rate, they get caught six times more. But now it's two women that we want to find. In the first case, a victim has been terrorised and saddled with a £10,000 bill that will ruin her life for years. And this is one of the culprits at a pawnbroker's in Pentonville in North London. She's trying to cash a cheque that was obtained through threats. She travels widely and has been seen passing cheques in Croydon and Edmonton. So if you know her, the instrument room number 0171 232 6132. That's 0171 232 6132. And next to Hertfordshire, and a woman who has a fondness for banks. She went into at least two of them with a forged credit card. Just look at how good these pictures are for the NatWest Bank. It's not a good place to try on a deception. The incident room number 01462425064. That's Hitchin 425064. If you recognise either of these women, you can call us here in the studio 0500 600 600. Strong results last month, 11 arrests, 8 directly because of calls to Crime Watch. Among them, three men seen after an unprovoked attack on a tube train in Hounslow, west of London. The victim was knifed in the back. Two names were phoned in repeatedly, and subsequently three men were arrested. They've now been charged with violent disorder, and two of them with grievous bodily harm. 
Two years ago, we appealed about a former house parent at a school in Hereford. Police had spent months searching for him after past pupils complained they'd been sexually assaulted. Viewers traced Patrick Duggan to South London and he was sentenced to 13 years, reduced on appeal to 10. But other Crime Watch viewers said they'd also been sexually assaulted, and not just by Duggan, but by the headmaster too. After a long police investigation, Dennis Eagles was last month convicted of 19 counts of sexual abuse, and he's awaiting sentence. Last week, a 14-month-old child was subjected to an extraordinary and terrifying ordeal. Little Daniel Grimshaw was grabbed from his baby buggy by two men in Hillary Road in Bradford. The little toddler was then driven around on the lap of the front passenger as the men made their escape at high speed. And at one point, they switched their car, their Volvo 340, for another car, a Honda Prelude, which was finally dumped in Watmuff's car park in Idle in Bradford. The men, both black in their mid to late 20s, one with dreadlocks, the other with a short afro. Police are very keen to trace Daniel's father, Maza Mahmood. Mr Mahmood, if you're watching and you had nothing to do with your son's abduction, well, please get in touch straight away. As you can imagine, Daniel's mother is frantic to recover him, particularly as he may be harbouring a very contagious infection, and in any case, he ought to be seen by a doctor. So please call us if you've seen Daniel, and if he's with you, please let the police know, or at any rate, take him to hospital for checks, because it's thought that he might have caught the human variant of foot and mouth disease. The number is 01274 376 183, that's Bradford, 376 183, or here on 0500 600 600. Now, uh, a violent burglar who seems to be tempting fate and isn't concerned about revealing his identity, which makes detectives feel he could become even more dangerous. It's the very happy house. We've brought up our four children here over the last 20 years. As we often do in the evenings, we have a television supper, and I know my wife was looking forward to EastEnders later on, which unfortunately we missed. This was the second visit by burglars in a matter of days. It's good, wasn't it? You know? Well, that's a good idea, I think. I saw an advert in one of those magazines. Yeah. What was that? What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? Get in there. Get out. Lie down. Put your hands behind your back. Come on. No. Come on. Don't tape up his mouth. He's an asthmatic. Where's the safe key? Tell me where the safe key is. Where's the safe key? It's here in my pocket. Here. If we go upstairs, I'll show you where it is. Come on. The leader was fairly military. His complexion was very putty-coloured. It was very pale. It looked as if he'd not been in the sun very much. He was very confident. He had uh, black hair swept back in the centre. Come on, sit down. Give us your hands. Why are you doing this? I need the money. So last time I'm going to do this, I won't do it again. I only want a few hundred quid, but he wants thousands. Stay there, on the floor. I think the leader is a professional. He will continue to burgle at all costs. Of course, I was here last Thursday. I was afraid, because the first burglar was not masked. I was afraid they'd kill us before they went. I don't worry about you seeing my face. My record, it don't make no difference. Get out. Now stay there. Where are the diamonds? Well, there aren't any. I don't like them. The items which were taken were mostly of great sentimental value. Most of the jewellery which was taken belonged to my great-great-grandmother. There was one particular brooch, a mourning brooch, of jet and pearls surrounded by gold, which was worn by my great-great-grandmother and which I wore to my son's christening. The fob watch chain belonging to my grandmother, 
I wore many, many times. There was a Georgian muff chain, which I loved. There were rings and brooches, all of which in today's market would not be terribly valuable, but of sentimental value to me, which I would have liked to have passed on to my children. Don't take my great-grandmother's candlesticks. Well, they're not silver. They won't be worth anything to you. Which are they? The ones with the square base. Perhaps somewhere inside he had a feeling of guilt. Maybe he had a grandmother whom he loved. Why us? Put it this way. I was told it was worth my while to come here, and I want to keep it that way. Don't you have a mother? Of course I do. She thinks I'm the tops. No, I don't want no messing about. I want 20 minutes before you call the police, and if I hear a bell ringing, I'll be back. Or I'll send some friends back. The burglars have certainly taken away our peace of mind. I'm afraid to go out into the garden in the dark. There isn't ever a day when I come home to the house when I'm not afraid. Six days later, five miles away, and another almost identical attack. Here again, the house had already been targeted, an attempted burglary six weeks before the confrontation. Once again, they took antiques and cash, but never credit cards. What's in here? Just papers. And once again, the leader seemed to have some sense of decency. What are these? War medals. They're yours? Do you win them? Yes. Where have the offenders been since then? Maybe they're back in prison. Maybe they've moved on. They're no longer in the district. But if you've heard of anything, if you recognize the way they operate, or if you come across the stolen goods, please give the incident room a call on 0181 649 0731. That's 0181 649 0731. Or call Crime Stoppers anonymously if you prefer. They're good for any crime. 0800 555 one. This may be more Jackie's field than mine, but as she's not here, I'll certainly do my best. So who do you know who's been conned out of jewellery or has lost valuable pieces in a burglary? We've come across a very large stash of money and what the trade refers to as brilliant cut and baguette diamonds. So, first, a heart of diamonds on a gold rope chain. And then this beautiful line of diamonds. It must have 50 or 60 diamonds in, in there and it's sometimes known as a tennis bracelet. But what about these rings, especially this platinum one? It's got three whorls of leaf-shaped diamonds and it once clearly had a bigger stone in the center. Right, finally, take a look at this diamond bracelet and also this beautiful necklace. Now, someone must be missing these. Call 01279 625 414. That's Harlow 625 414. Or call us here in the studio, 0500 600 600. Last month, we asked for information on the murder of the 87-year-old Jean Barnes, who was bludgeoned to death in her house in Worthing in Sussex. We also gave details about a possible suspect, and as a result of the programme, that man came forward. He's now in custody, charged with a large number of offences, though they're not related to the murder. But now there are new clues about what happened to Jean Barnes, and so we've a new appeal. Miss Barnes seems to have had a lot of petty burglaries in the months before she died. Several things were stolen, and she had to change her locks. Then, mysteriously, a man phoned her, asking for bank details. Well, why do you want all this? You've got it with my account at the bank. Oh, very well. Two weeks later, credit cards arrived in Miss Barnes's name. As soon as she realised what was going on, she cancelled the bank accounts and had her locks changed again. Now, I want to record a very peculiar phone call to my house. A man Police believe the forger was so determined to continue stealing that he got into her house and killed her. Very, very independent lady, um, very strong-minded, but at the same time, very kind. And I should imagine if you needed help, she would have given it to you straight away. So who do you know who is sometimes in Worthing 
and has handwriting like this. This is joined up writing, quite hard to disguise, but even the capital letters have distinctive features. And two cheques were forged. Look at the two dots in between the pounds and pence. And look at the small capital letters on the date where it says 23rd. This is another forgery, a note to the milkman, again in Jean Barnes' name. Now Steve Scott, who is here, has got this letter, again the back of this envelope, which is addressed to the milkman. Look at the G there, which doesn't have a tail on it, whereas the Y does, and that's typical. None of the Gs have uh, a, a tail. And something else that you might see here, um, you see all of these have got some red on, that's from forensics. Um, look at this and sign, this ampersand, it's done like an E, and that's the same on, on all his checks. And I, I gather he made a consistent mistake too on some yes. of the details. Yes, on the um, Alliance and Leicester application, for example, it asked for Miss Barnes' uh, mother's maiden name. The offender wrote Jenkins. We know this is false. Now, this method of operation that he's using, it's unlikely this is the first time he's, he's tried it on. I mean, presumably he's tried to open bank accounts and other people's names it's, before. It's, it's quite possible that this has been done before, and we'd be very interested to hear from anybody that has had uh, a burglary followed by a bogus telephone call asking for details and then the opening of an account which they weren't aware of. If anybody does know anything on this, there's now a very big reward. Yes, uh, the reward's been increased now to £30,000 because I believe there is somebody out there that has some knowledge about this offence. Uh, Miss Barnes was 87 years old and she was murdered in her home and I'd urge that person to examine their conscience and phone crime watch this evening. All right, certainly do, Steve. Uh, call the incident room, 0845 607 0999. That's a, a local call number, 0845 607 0999. Now, two quick but very important appeals. And the first one in London. So who's this? He's back in May at a supermarket in Blackheath. The gunman's got a London accent. He's pale-faced and he's smartly dressed. Can you put a name to the sunglasses gunman? 0171 407 6319. That's 0171 407 6319. And see if you can give us an address for Donald Allen Donovan. He did a bunk from court last month on charges of kidnap and blackmail. He comes from South Wales, although he lived in Hertfordshire. And he's described as a Jasper Carrot lookalike. And you can judge that for yourself. That's Donald Donovan. Call the instant room on 01923. 472065. That's Watford, 472065. Or call us here on the studio, 0500 600 600. Since Crime Watch in June, 73 names put forward have been eliminated as suspects for the murder of Mary Lazenby. Mrs. Lazenby had been beaten to death in her flat in Bethnal Green, East London. One Crime Watch viewer was so appalled by the brutality of her murder, he put up a £10,000 reward, and that's now been doubled to £20,000. Someone in the area knows something. Callers are eligible for the reward, even if they remain anonymous. And a new appeal for Anthony James Fitzgerald, wanted for serious sexual offences. A woman rang to say he'd been spotted in a cafe in Liverpool. He looks thinner than in the picture, perhaps because he has diabetes. A lot of people are now very keen to find him. Tell you a little bit about some of the calls that are coming in at the moment on Stephen Reed, the university technician. We wanted to hear from who might have information on the murder of Elizabeth Stacy. Um, we've got two clusters of sightings for him, one in the West Country, one elsewhere, but we mustn't raise too many hopes on that, but obviously those are being checked out now. An intriguing uh, discovery on the Jean Barnes murder. Apparently another elderly woman died in very suspicious circumstances two years ago in the same town in Worthing, and in her case as well, money had been missing from her bank, and that's something the police are going to look at at the moment. On the Doncaster Road Race, we've actually got lots of stuff coming in on that, and uh, we've got two names that are coming in uh, which are, uh, seem to be consistent. Now uh, a man that a 17-year-old girl has described as a pig. You might think it's a rather good description, at least, of his behaviour. This is uh, in Streatham, in South London, about two months ago. See if you recognise the man, his companion, or their car. We're not sure if it's a polo or a golf. I'd been babysitting, and 
Normally my boyfriend would come to pick me up, but this night he couldn't, so I had to take the bus. I was looking forward to going home to a nice hot bath, to a nice warm bed, a nice cup of hot chocolate, <laughs> and to sleep. I noticed the car pull up in front of me. It was a white Volkswagen Polo um, registration N14 something. The man got out, looked like he was looking for something, so I didn't think nothing of it. But I was screaming, trying to struggle, but he was very strong and he was holding both my hands. I was thinking, am I going to get raped? Um, am I going to die? Just lay there and shut up. During the 15-minute journey, the car went past the garden centre in Nollies Road. Drive back again for all my raping friends. It was like very calm and quiet. All I could hear was the music and me screaming. They seemed to know what they were doing, how they're going to do it, and where they're going to take me. The car stopped by a block of flats. The music was still very loud, and in what seemed to be a pre-planned attack, the driver of the car held the girl while the passenger raped her. He made, just made me feel like might as well just die now. There's, there's nothing else for me to do. The two men calmly drove the car back to Brixton, and finally they let their victim out near the Brixton bus garage on Streatham Hill. Get your stuff and get out. As time's gone on, things have come back into mind, like what type of music was playing, and it sounded a bit like EZ. <laughs> On the front dashboard, Snoopy, kind of air freshener. On the back window, there was a Choice FM sticker. The actual driver, his hair is in plaits and the tips are a blondish colour with his tag name graffitied into the back of his head. It starts with the letter T. The rapist looked round 24, 25. His scar going across his nose, down to the bottom of his cheek. He had quite a big nose, pig shape. Looked like a pig. That's what I thought of him, he looked like a pig. Since Crime Watch started many years ago, we have rarely seen this sort of terrifying abduction from the streets. Stop it happening, please. Tell us who they are. 0181 649 2235. That's 0181 649 2235. If you've been a victim of any sort of crime uh, and you want to talk to someone, victim support line is open. There'll be people there till 2 a.m. and the number there is 0845 30 30 900. That's 0845 30 30 900. Now to Carmarthen and Tenby, and a man who's been causing a lot of upset in the area, carrying out burglaries and thefts. And his girlfriend may be in on it too. So who's this at a hotel in Carmarthen about a month ago? He fits the description of the thief. And who's this woman with him? She's carrying a walking stick, but does she really need it? Tell us their names, please. 01267 226327. That's Carmarthen 226327. In June and August, two women were sexually assaulted whilst they were walking in the Woking area of Surrey. Although the attacker ran away, when they screamed, or in one case bit him, we fear he could rape someone unless he's caught. Now we'd like to talk to this man, who was in the area at the time. He's wearing a very distinctive striped T-shirt. If you recognise him or know who he is, then ring the instant room 01483 
761991. That's Woking 761991. Or on both of these cases, you can ring us here in the studio on our studio number 0500 600 600. Do you own uh, a white van? More specifically, do you own a white van with a refrigeration unit on the roof? And is it ever used by your employees over the weekend? If so, was your van damaged about 10 weeks ago? On a Saturday night in early September, a white refrigerated van sped away across fields and crashed through closed gates at Epping Forest Country Club. Now, it so happens that that evening, a man was viciously attacked in the club. In fact, he was kicked so badly, he was in intensive care for a week. Although he survived, he may be disfigured for life. Three men were picked up by a taxi from Buckhurst Hill tube station a few miles away. The taxi driver overheard one of them who was worried what his boss might say about damage to a white van. The three were taken to the Opera House Club in Tottenham in North London. Do you recall seeing them there? Did anyone at any stage boast you about beating somebody up? The police badly need to find these three. Please tell us who they are. 0181 345 3775. That's 0181 345 3775. Our final appeal tonight uh, is a rather quirky chain of events that starts late on a Saturday night, two weeks ago, in the centre of Leicester. Oh yeah, for the cab please. Uh, uh, St Peter's Lane, outside the Cherry Tree pub please. Uh, an hour? Oh no, no, I can go quicker than that. Oh, no. Oh, I forget it. Thanks, anyway. Pete, I'm, I'm going to phone Barbara. She'll come and pick us up. Taxi! Hmm. <laughs> Listen, uh, could you come and pick us up? Oh, love, we've been waiting hours. Oh, what about Karen? Where's Karen? What time is she due back? A lot of luck, Pete. Excuse me. Do you know where East Park Road is? East Park Road? Yeah. Yes, I do, mate. Listen, I'll tell you what. If you don't mind, I can either tell you where East Park Road is, or if you give us a lift afterwards to where we want to go, we can actually take you to East Park Road. It's not that far. Hmm? Okay, then. Yeah. I thought he was saying, no, on your bike, mate. And I was quite prepared, yeah, I'd still tell him away. I, I, you know, I was just probably uh, very eager to get home. I'd had, had a bit to drink. I just, my bed was calling me. Uh, whereabouts exactly in East Park Road did you have to go? Um, I'll know when I get there. All right. <laughs> uh, in a hurry, then, are you? It's just that I've got to pick somebody up, and I'm running a bit late. That's it, now we're going out of East Park Road. Yeah, I know where I am now. This was somewhere down Oakley Road. OK, won't be a minute, yeah? No problem, no problem. Hiya. Hello. OK. Where to now? OK. Uh, down to the end and turn left. Where are you both from, then? I've been living in Ifields for the last couple of years. I'm a Leicester girl. Ah, right. And you? Leamington Spa. I'm just standing for the weekend. Leamington Spa, yeah. So you have a good night? I wouldn't say I was totally at ease with them, but I was quite happy that there was that there was nothing untowards about them. I thought I could trust them. A few pubs in the city. She had braided, dreadlocked hair. I think she definitely had a blemish high on her cheek. I was very grateful for them to bring us home. I have to say, you know, they were good Samaritans in my book at that time. Listen, you've been really kind. Thank you. I know it was a lot further than you thought it was. Yeah, it's oh. fine. Don't worry. Come on. 
Come on, Pete. Wake up, mate. Come on, time to go. Uh, do you mind if I use your toilet? No, of course. No problem. Listen, why don't you come in for a quick drink? You sure you don't mind? Yeah, come on. You'll have a nice brandy, won't you, Pete? I've got to get to bed. I I'm leaving you to it. <laughs> Boom. Here we are. <clears throat> Where's your toilet? So are you two, uh, together? <laughs> no, no. No. I'm Sean's girlfriend's sister. I live at home with my daughter. Oh, really? Will you, uh, excuse me a minute? They would only have been on their own a minute, a minute and a half. Mm. Mm. Is that a time? We better get going. Yeah, we better. Thanks mm. for the drink. Yeah, thanks. No problem. Thank you for the lift. No problem. I'll see you out. And drive carefully, yeah? Yeah, yeah thanks right. for the drink. Thanks very much again. You take care now. Two hours later, the daughter came home from a nightclub. Dad? Dad? Where's Mum's car gone? What? And then, of course, dawned on me I'd had people in who I'd, I'd, I'd never ever seen before in my life and probably never will see again in, in my life. I couldn't believe my wife's car had been used in an armed robbery. This was three days later. At the same time, the jeweler's wife was coming to the shop. Oh, God. In a supreme twist of irony, the stolen getaway car was boxed in. The gunman had to flee on foot. Kevin Whitcomb, um, that robbery, of course, was a very, very serious offence. The theft of the car was not. I mean, it really wasn't a very serious offence. No, that's right, Nick. We're treating both incidents as, a, as separate. Um, we believe that the car theft was a seized opportunity. Well, they um, just saw the keys there. And... Saw the keys. Nonetheless, a crime, but not in keeping with an armed robbery. Are you going to catch the, the first two, the two in terms of the car? Oh, most definitely. Why they've do you say definitely? Well, they've left an awful lot of forensic evidence at the scene of the car theft. So if you, if you can find them, you can definitely pin them to that? Yes. And uh, how much credence do you give to all the stuff they said in the car about him being Sean and coming from Leamington Spa, her being a, a mum of a daughter and things like that? He may or may not come from Leamington Spa. I, I don't know that. I mean, somebody out there may know him. Um, I'm more interested in the female. Um, she certainly, we believe, has links with Oakley Road. Um, she says that she's a girl from Leicester. And in particular, she has the blemish under her left eye. Now, you say you're going to catch them anyway. If they're watching tonight, why should they come forward and put their, their, their necks in for, for the car offence? Because I will catch them. There is no doubt about that from the evidence that I've collected so far. What I want to do is obviously question them about the car theft. As the officer in the case, I'll ex exercise my discretion in relation to that matter, but I do need to speak to them. Is the implication that if they don't come forward, you'll throw the book at them? I most definitely will throw the book at them. Well, 
Uh, as I say, the robbery was a very, very serious offence. The theft of the car, it really wasn't. So if that couple want to disentangle themselves from this, now is the time to call. If you've got any information, these are the numbers to ring. 0116 248 6750. That's Leicester. 248 6750. Or our own free call number. We're here. It's live, of course. 0500 600 600. In July, two 17-year-olds were walking in Clapham in South London when a man walking towards them stopped and without, completely without provocation, stabbed one of them in the neck. In fact, he nearly cut his throat. Now, his friend bravely ran after the attacker and in a brief fight, the knife man was hit in the face and his nose may have been broken. But eventually he escaped into a tube station and this might be him. Did you see him with a bloody nose in Clapham South where he got onto a northbound train. And above all, who is he? This is the knife that he used, and do you recognise it? If you've any clues, then give us a ring. 0181 649 2521. That's 0181 649 2521. We've had a surprising number of calls on the road rage attack. Um, two people have given the same name. We have to be cautious about that, but we've got somebody who's pretty certain they're a witness to, to the attack. Um, on the jewellery that Jeremy was showing you earlier, uh, someone from an insurance company has, has called us saying they're pretty sure that they've paid out on those jewels. We may be able to trace those back. Now, we're taking calls here in the studio until midnight. Um, you'll see other numbers on CFAX. If you look on page 621, um, if you've got a computer linked up, you can email us at crimewatchuk at the BBC. Crime Watch update is at midnight, but um, if it's bedtime before then, reflect on the fact that uh, the latest crime stats show burglaries down 6%, violent crime down 6%, even car crime, which is so difficult in this country, even that's down a bit. So, with your help, we'll make life even safer. Don't have nightmares. Do sleep well. Good night.